I was uh, really excited actually to get on this trip because it's my first time to Fraser. You know, I've, I've done Stradi and, and places like that a bit more local, but yeah, first time for Fraser, and I was really excited, um, especially about the fishing and the camping. Yeah, so we left early in the morning from the Gold Coast and drove up to Harvey Bay to pop the boats in at Urangan and then punched out over to Fraser Island and it was a pretty cool trip. Well, it was an early start. Um, you know, we got up to, to get the boats ready, pack all the camping gear and, and head up here to Harvey Bay from, from the Gold Coast. So, you know, typical, typical road trip, stop off at the servo, get a coffee, get some windings <laughs> and we finally got to Harvey Bay put the boats in nice and early the next morning, you know, early 2.30 a.m. start. So that was, a, that was a big day, but we managed to get over here, get camp set up, and it made for a, a great day's fishing as well, so it was well worth the journey. The boats we were in were awesome, and the way that they sort of skip through the chop and makes it a reasonably comfortable trip. But yeah, definitely worthwhile once you get here, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, personally, I drove the Top Ender, which is uh, one of my favourite vessels, but we brought over the, uh, the Ocean Spirit. We also had the Renegade and we had the Frontier, and yeah, awesome. Obviously, having the boat, yes, means you can get to many more spots that you can't reach from, from land-based fishing. Places like this in particular, which are even remote again, so you've got to spend at least half an hour to get across to, to the creek here, Congo Creek and then we spent another half an hour running up north um, to the fishing ground, so it, it's really only accessible by, by having your own boat. Yeah, we're, we're really blessed with some of the locations that we can visit here, um, you know, especially places like this, where it's, it's just absolutely beautiful, and you've got a, a diverse range of fishing options as well. It's like it's untouched by civilization. You, know, you look one way and you see beautiful beaches and wonderful flowing creeks. You look another way, you can see dolphins and whales. And it, it really is uh, it's quite amazing. Uh, the, the white, beautiful white sand, there's yappies everywhere, it's the stingray swimming through. It's, it's great. For me, uh, definitely the highlight was chasing tuna. That's what I really wanted to do. And, and luckily enough, I managed to get one. So bonus. Yeah, we all know that I'm a big fan of fishing and uh, you know, it's obviously flicked a few soft plastics in the creek but then also too we punched out into Harvey Bay and we chased some tuna which was unreal. Um, plenty of sharks chewing on the tuna uh, and uh, but then we also managed to pick up a few of the sort of the bottom bashing species as well. Um, but uh, look, Fishing is fishing and just being able to drop a line in it or throw a flick of lure is it's always awesome fun. The trip's been amazing for many reasons. Um, but definitely again was, was hooking that, that tuna, you know, that, that sense of anticipation when you see them breaking the surface and you throw that first metal lure at them and it's just, you know, that first hook up, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, well, I didn't catch a lot, to be honest. I uh, had a cracking run with one of the tuners and it almost spilled me and then it turned on me and spat the, spat the lure, so that was a bit disappointing. And then dropped down and hooked up on a, a big shark and then fought that for what seemed, what seemed to be an age. And um, whether it was tiredness that kicked in or whether it was just my own stupidity, but managed to lose that one as well, so. Yeah, yeah, there was, there's a few sharks around and um, if you fished here recently you would know that. So the fact we got that to the boat before it was taken was, was, was brilliant. I don't want to talk about them. I, um, you know, fishing is always a competition. And, but yeah, we did, they picked up a few longfin tuna and uh, the sashimi from that was beautiful. And uh, yeah, good on them. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not dirty at all. Yeah, there's nothing quite like catching that fish and then taking it back and, and making your own sashimi with a bit of wasabi, bit of soy sauce. That's, uh, that's what it's all about. 
it's always good to eat someone else's catch and it's even better when someone else has to clean it and fillet it as well. I think that's what makes boating so special is the ability that you can actually, you know, one minute you can be in one place and the next minute you can be in another and being able to, to fully provide from what the sea can give you is, is what makes boating so awesome. The food's important, but one of the things about fishing is that you regularly forget to eat, forget to drink, because you get so excited about trying to catch the fish. But um, look, if you've got the facilities available to you, there's no reason why you can't cook up a cracking meal on your boat. And so you know, that's just one of the things about being prepared with camping is making sure you have plenty of water and, and you, you eat great food. You don't have to skimp in when you're camping. Now you can go to the fish and chip shop and you can you can get it all packaged up. You can have it deep fried and fat all you like, but uh, it, it really nothing really compares to fish that you catch and you cook and it's straight out of the sea the same day that you've caught it. Hey! Oh no! You just got shot, mate. That's the tax man. Yeah, I made the rookie mistake of not using the dual anchor in the creek. Um, so the tide went out and the boat was left high and dry. But uh, luckily there was a few of us here and, and I had a few mates give me a hand and we got that back in the water. Look, I think we live in one of the best places in the world, obviously South East Queensland, but uh, being able to, 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 to load up a boat and to go to a, an untouched part of, of your local area set up a campsite, even if you needed to tow the boat a few hours like we've did, uh, to, to then set up a campsite and, and just really experience the great outdoors, it, it does make a huge difference, to, I think, to lifestyle. Where we are still has mobile coverage, which is it a good thing, is it a bad thing? But yeah, just the ability to switch off and, and I guess take a deep breath and just really enjoy the, the world that we live in. I, I think that that is something that you can't do in the, without without a boat. And you know what? I'm gonna have the last one. Yep. Oh well, you know, I don't know what it would have been like to not catch a fish because we uh, <laughs> we got a couple in the boat. I know um, I know the other boys were a bit sore that they didn't get one, but uh, you know you win some, you lose some. You know, Dave and John they did lose one. Uh, they do, the big shark came up. They they were taking a bit of time to to get that fish into the boat, and they took too long and, and lost it to a shark. Everyone's enjoying themselves, so you, you meet people of all different walks of life uh, when, when, when you're camping. Uh, even recently, earlier today, we, we watched some people wakeboarding behind a four-wheel drive and pulling down behind us here, and that was a different experience. But uh, look, I, I won't have a go, actually. But more, more importantly, you know, everyone's a bit different, and it's so much fun just meeting new people. So I, I do a lot of camping, uh, whether it be you know, sort of off, off the water's edge or sort of more inland, but being prepared Always making sure you check your weather and, 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 and having the right gear for the right kind of camping that you're doing. So obviously being in a, in a very, very sandy environment here, you have to be very conscious that sand's going to get into everything, so you've got to think about how you store your gear. Um, but then if, you're, you know, if it was meant to be raining or if the weather was going to be bad, it doesn't mean you cancel the event, it just means you've got to be more organised and just bring great wet weather gear and, and just keep yourselves nice and dry, but you know, camping should be fun for everyone. Nothing compares to quality accommodation when you are camping. Um, yep, you can, you can rough it if you like, but I'm old enough now to realise that roughing it's not really the best way to go. Uh, you know, as long as you've you know, got a, a comfy sleeping bag, something to sleep on top of, a, a nice dry tent, I think the rest of it's kind of a luxury after that. My favourite part of this weekend, it's a tricky one because every part's been favourite, you know. So, I like to tinker. I'm a, I like to just just keep my hands busy and, and so it's just being able to, to toy with the boats, setting up fishing gear, um, I, don't, I don't even mind sort of tinkering around the campsite, washing up, cleaning, it's just those sorts of things, it just makes, it, nothing seems to be a chore when you're camping and so I want to put my hand on, um, probably because I didn't catch many fish but look ultimately I, I just think the, the whole experience has been unreal.